Welcome, age of vintage society. Sid Charisse could do it all. Classically trained in Russian ballet, she could dance with anyone in just about any style, and partnered with greats like Gene Kelly and Fred Astaire. Known for her glamour and sensuality on screen, her appearances in Singing in the Rain, Brigadoon and The Bandwagon made her a star. Today she is remembered as one of the brightest stars in old Hollywood musicals. How Sid Charisse's $48.5 million legs paved her way in Hollywood history. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Sid Charisse, the Silken Dancer It's often been said that Sid Charisse was the greatest female movie dancer, and she was able to partner the very different styles of the two great male movie dancers, Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly. Her only real rival is Eleanor Powell, a prodigious hoofer who came from the world of slightly clunky tap dancing, whereas Charisse had trained to be a ballerina, and even danced with the ballet russes when she was a young girl. Ballet provided the backbone of her rock-solid technique, yet when she danced straight ballet on screen, something was missing. In trying to be overly correct for ballet dancing, Charisse looked too tall, too leggy. But give her something jazzy, something modern, something fifties, and she does things with her body that are hard to describe, let alone understand. Fred Astaire called her beautiful dynamite, and when she was dancing, Sid Charisse was a dynamic and alluring talent. One of the screen's finest dancers, she became a legendary performer when she partnered Gene Kelly in the Broadway Ballet, sequence of Singing in the Rain, and went on to star with Kelly in Brigadoon and It's Always Fair Weather, and with Fred Astaire in The Bandwagon and Silk Stockings. Comparing Astaire and Kelly, she diplomatically stated, It's like comparing apples and oranges. They're both delicious. Long-legged, seductive and sexy, she was one of Hollywood's iconic dancing stars, who can be mentioned with Eleanor Powell, Anne Miller and Vera Ellen. Although she excelled in the ballet style, she could hoof with the best, as she demonstrated in her stunning gym dance, Baby You Knock Me Out, in It's Always Fair Weather, and her fated-to-be-mated duet with Esther in Silk Stockings. Her romantic pas de deux with Esther in the bandwagon to the tune of Dancing in the Dark is widely regarded as one of the most beautiful film dance duets. The daughter of a jeweller, she was born Tula Elise Frinklier in Amarillo, Texas in 1921. She studied ballet from the age of six, and at 13 she joined the Ballet Russes. She began dancing at the age of six to regain strength and health after a childhood contraction of polio. When she was around 12, she started to study ballet in Los Angeles, and at the age of 14 she joined the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo. Her name Sid came from her brother calling her Sid instead of sister as a child. He feared that Sid was too masculine, so it was changed to Sid. I'm going on record as saying nothing was masculine about Sid Charisse, while the Charisse came from her first husband, a dancer named Nico. Sid Charisse was a fantastic name for her. It sounds like back alley strewn with coloured streamers, a mix of grit and fancy style. In Monte Carlo, she worked with David Lachine and Leonid Massine, using the names Felia Sidorova and Maria Istomina. She married her ex-dance teacher, Nico Charisse, in 1939. Sid met Nico Charisse under scandalous circumstances. She was a student at the Hollywood Ballet School, and he was a promising young dancer. While on tour in Europe with the ballet company, they met again, fell head over heels for one another, and impulsively eloped but the good times wouldn't last forever. Sid married Nico Charisse when she was just 18 years old. The couple were happy, for a time at least, and they had one son together, Nico Jr. Sadly, the marriage fell apart. For reasons that are still mysterious to this day, the pair divorced in 1947. In 1943, David Lachine asked her to appear in her first movie ballet in Something to Shout About in which she is credited as Lily Norwood. The same year she played a Bolshoi dancer in Mission to Moscow by Michael Curtis. 
After World War II broke up, the ballet company she was dancing in, Sid Charisse lived in Los Angeles full-time and was given a dancing role in her first movie. She was then discovered by a prominent choreographer, who had already recruited Gene Kelly, and she quickly progressed to MGM's principal ballet dancer. She went on to dance with Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly, most famously known for her routines in Ziegfeld Follies. She also starred alongside Judy Garland in a film during the late 1940s. Fred Astaire had a tremendous amount of respect for his co-star and heralded her as one of the greatest dancers of her day. Being in the movies wasn't something that Charisse had considered. She didn't think she could act and instead saw herself as a dancer. That all changed when her Ballet Russe co-star David Lachine was tapped for a dance. In need of a partner, he turned to Charisse. He didn't know it, but his decision would launch the career of one of Hollywood's all-time greats. Lachine asked Charisse to dance with him in the film, and while the film itself was nothing to write home about, it earned Charisse a lot of notice. Appearing in movies may not have been on her radar, but the offers started rolling in. She ended up signing a seven-year contract with MGM Studios for $150 to dance in their movie musicals. With legs and talent such as Charisse had, it's only natural that MGM would want to protect their asset. In 1952, the studio allegedly insured her legs for $5 million, about $48.5 million today. The sum was so huge that Charisse made her way into the 2001 Guinness Book for The Most Valuable Legs. While Charisse was second to none when it came to dancing, but a singer she was not. When she joined MGM, she received voice lessons to get rid of her Texas accent. But even after the gruelling lessons, Charisse just didn't have the singing voice needed for a Hollywood musical. All her songs all had to be dubbed. Charisse's dark hair and alluring chocolate eyes gave her a somewhat exotic appearance. Before she hit it big, studios tended to cast her as exotic characters, pairing her with other ethnic actors. Because of what MGM considered her Latin looks, Charisse was paired with Mexican-born Ricardo Montalban in five films, notably supporting swimming star Esther Williams in Fiesta and On an Island with You, in which they performed vigorous Mexican dances. After her divorce, she has the chance to partake in the dating scene she had missed out on as a teenager. Garnering the attention of famous men, she ultimately found herself in serious relationships with both billionaire Howard Hughes Jr. and singer Tony Martin. Martin won out, and the couple married on May 9, 1948, in Santa Barbara. That same year, she had disappointingly lost a role alongside Fred Astaire in Easter Parade due to an injured knee, and was replaced by fellow Texas dancer Ann Miller. She recuperated in time to take a part in The Kissing Bandit with Frank Sinatra, and did a memorable dance number with Miller and Ricardo Montalban, but the film itself was unsuccessful. Then in 1950 she made the decision to pass on a lead role with Gene Kelly in the Academy Award winning An American in Paris, after discovering she was expecting a baby with Martin. She really became famous in 1952 with her fantastic appearance in the Broadway melody ballet scene with Gene Kelly in the most famous musical ever, Singing in the Rain by Gene Kelly and Stanley Donan. Her white dress in the dreamlike sequence, her hairdo a la Louise Brooks, and her look in the first part of the ballet were a revelation for many people. The beauty and the talent of Sid Charisse made her one of the stars of the movie, despite her relatively short appearance in it and her silent part. Sometimes a little bit of luck is all it takes to get your big break, and luck was on Charisse's side when she was cast in Singing in the Rain. The producer wanted to include a dream ballet sequence in the film. Since Debbie Reynolds could barely dance as it was, she wasn't exactly their first choice for the number. With Debbie Reynolds out of the running, Kelly wanted to cast his dance assistant, Carol Haney. This is where luck came in for Charisse, because she had something that the honchos at MGM thought Haney lacked, sex appeal. As director Stanley Donan explained, they needed someone who could stop a man just by sticking up her leg. Charisse definitely fitted that bill. When asked about her initial reaction to being in movies, Charisse said that it was a dream. 
While the strict world of professional ballet was closed and rigid, the MGM studio was a fairyland. You can't blame her for being a little bit starstruck. One of the biggest adjustments that Cherise had to make in Hollywood was getting over her shyness. As Kelly recalled when asked about her, the most challenging thing that he had to do when he started working with her was to get her to show off her beautiful legs and beautiful style. If you've got it, flaunt it! Her weight at B-double was used again by Vincenti Minnelli in The Bandwagon, where she starred with Fred Astaire, which was a real consecration. Singing in the Rain and The Bandwagon are Sid Charisse's most important movies, and acts like the Broadway Melody Ballet and in the second movie Dancing in the Dark and the Girl Hunt Ballet are forever in the Hollywood Musicals Hall of Fame. On May 25, 1979, Charisse's entire world came crashing down. Her daughter-in-law, Sheila Charisse, had been one of the unlucky passengers on board American Airlines Flight 191. Soon after departing from O'Hare International Airport in Chicago, the plane encountered a freak accident and plummeted to the ground, killing almost everyone on board. As the popularity of the Hollywood musical tanked in the 1950s, Charisse quit dancing, but worked continuously as an actress. She even appeared in a Janet Jackson video in the 1990s, showing her continued spunk and ability to evolve as an in-demand entertainer. She also produced an exercise video called Easy Energy Shape Up, aimed at senior citizens looking for a fun and easy workout. She also received a National Medal of the Arts and Humanities in 2006, which is the most prestigious award given to artists in the United States. Charisse continued to celebrate the golden age of her career by appearing in various documentaries about MGM's heyday. Lastly, she performed as an ageing ballerina on Broadway in 1992, dancing in the musical version of Grand Hotel. She died on June 17, 2008, from a heart attack. Charisse was known as not only being a great talent, but also being above the whole Hollywood scene, she never thought of herself as a great star and actually considered herself to be an introvert. She has been quoted on her official website as saying, Perhaps that's because I am basically an introvert. I knew that I loved working, performing. What the public made of it was their business. I hoped that they liked me and admired my work, of course. But that pedestal they stuck me up on was insignificant in my view. That humble attitude led her to be a highly functional and happy individual, which included a happy marriage to her second husband that lasted over 50 years. Today, Sid Charisse is continuously cherished as one of America's greats during the musical era of Hollywood, and young performers often emulate themselves after her grace and ability to steal a scene with the simplest of steps. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Sid Charisse? She had definitely had her unique and sensual charisma, which is still shining through if you see her in these movies.